remember a time when hugs flowed freely, handshakes were customary, and a reassuring hand on the shoulder was totally normal. It feels like a long time ago, doesn't it? Positive human touch is an integral part of human interaction, but it's something the pandemic and physical distancing rules have taken away from us. We are made to be touched. So what happens when we aren't? Joining me for a deep dive into this is Carlin Purcell, Tessa Virtue, and Dr. Helena Wasling. So good to see you all. And Dr. Wasling, thanks for joining us from Sweden. Our bodies are literally designed to respond to touch. So can you explain that a little bit more? Well, you can say that the body is equipped with two parallel touch systems. So there's one system that, you know, when you hold objects in your hand, it tells your brain whether they are hard or smooth or rough or whatever. But then there's also a, a parallel system that's activated, particularly when we uh, experience human to human touch. So it's a touch system. It's a system of nerve cells that are specialized to respond to human to human touch. And that um, activates emotional parts of your brain and can give you sensations of uh, being safe or happy or um, even, of course, sad or um, well included in the social world. They're activated especially by uh, a slowly moving touch across your skin. Um, they respond better when um, it's a skin tempered um, touch. So it's not for cold or warm, but for skin to skin uh, contact. Yeah, and that's why babies need it, right? They say babies mm. need touch. It's like integral to their development and, and all of us need it as a matter of fact. So Tessa, touch has been a huge part of the ice dance choreography in your skating career. And I'm sure the countless fan interactions that you have. Do you remember how far into the pandemic you first realized you were missing that, that human touch? And was it easy to identify that that's what it was? Or was it more of a sense that just something was off, something was missing? At first, there was simply a void, this nagging feeling that something was missing. And I think with everything going on in the world, it was really easy to misinterpret the sensation of longing for human touch. But there was a moment. It was going home to London and visiting my nieces when I finally realized. And I just wanted to scoop them both up in my arms and really made me reflect on not only how we connect, but also how we comfort others in times of stress. It's probably the most natural human instinct. I know for my parents, not being able to scoop up their grandkids is like harrowing for them. So, Carlin, there are lots of conversations about the shadow pandemic of loneliness that's also going on. How does touch play into that? Touch is, is, is like a language, as we heard from Dr. Um, um, Helena, and we've lost access to that language because through touch, we can actually decode emotions. We can say we care. And what, what we've seen through the research is that not just about loneliness, but what happens when we're coming out of that loneliness is like we're thawing out, Tracy. Like yeah. we're thawing out, but we're thawing out in a way that will be even tougher, what the science is showing, even tougher than the time spent in isolation. So I think when we start getting back out into seeing each other and connecting again, we will learn, we'll have to relearn this language of touch. But we're definitely feeling the effects of it right now because it's like we've kind of lost one of our nonverbal communication skills. You're absolutely right. But when I see you again, I'm just going to climb right up on your back. So I'm just warning yes. you now, okay? <laughs> Ready. Ready for the big hug. <laughs> Tessa, how much did you prioritize human touch before now? I never thought of myself as affectionate. I, and I realized it's all relative because I spent much of my life in a world that was incredibly physical. But I think perhaps the pandemic has is that exacerbated this issue. You know, it's been brought to the forefront of these conversations because there's no longer the option of human touch. And it makes us all realize just how critical it is to our mental health and well-being. And you mentioned this, we're, we're connected now virtually more than ever, but mm -hmm. the research is showing that 80% of people feel that this has actually diminished our capacity for empathy, which is what leads to touch. And 51% of people noted that the time spent on social media is also a barrier to physical connectivity. So to your question, if I wasn't consciously prioritizing it before, I sure appreciate its value now, and I will never take it for granted again. 
I hear that. Our eyes are wide open now. And this brings me to my next question, Carr. Even without the pandemic, we are in a very technology-driven society. We text instead of calling. We like pictures instead of hanging out with our friends. The pandemic has exacerbated this, as Tessa mentioned. So why is it important for us to prioritize connecting in person once the pandemic restrictions lift? Oh, because if not, we will stay in that zone of not leveraging that human language of touch. Or in some cases, um, the brain actually sees this as a preferred state because we've had to practice for so long. And it's a part of our survival in terms of staying safe. Dr. Wasling, uh, what are some ways you suggest people can lessen the burden of living without touch right now as the pandemic continues? Usually if, if someone loses a sense, like if you lose your eyesight or your, your hearing, the other senses sort of need to step up and, and do the job. And I think maybe that's how we need to reason even now. So um, I think that it's a very good idea if you, if you fear that people in your vicinity are feeling lonely or being isolated. Um, use your, your phone as it was meant to be used to begin with. Go back to actually having conversations. And you also have the, um, the, the physical effects of touch that reduces anxiety and make you feel at ease. And um, perhaps sinking into a warm bath could sort of activate the, the nervous system in a similar way. Um, so that's also a way to, to compensate. Great tips there. Now, Tessa, you and I have something in common. We're both Olympians, just joking. We both work with <laughs> Nivea, and they actually recently commissioned two studies on the profound effects the lack of human touch before and during the pandemic is having on the world. The results, fascinating. For example, 75% of respondents said this isolation has made them realize how important physical touch is for their health. So Tessa, this is really important to you. You've been working closely with Nivea to raise awareness about it. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yes, well, I'm thrilled to be working alongside you with Nivea and really excited to, to help share their brand purpose, care for human touch, to inspire togetherness. The mission is really to encourage social connections, both emotionally and eventually physically. And as you mentioned, the recent isolation has really played an enormous role in this loneliness that people are feeling. There's a real vulnerability um, and that nine out of 10 people are now realizing that really that human touch is key to a fulfilled and happy life. So Nivea, as you know, has always really cared about making people feel good in their skin. And this new purpose is a great evolution that highlights their efforts to raise awareness and, and inspire those social connections. I'm happy su to support big brands that get it and that get that this is about connection. This is about humans uh, loving and missing other humans. So I love Nivea for that. And I'm also really proud to be a part of this project and an ambassador for this brand. Thanks, Tessa. Carlin, now Thank it's you. expected that our new normal might never include nonverbal gestures like handshakes or even social hugging again. I can't believe that. Now, do you think we'll be able to learn new ways of human connection? Oh, absolutely. And that's the beauty and the joy of us as human beings. We are so resilient and we have that ability for us to create those new emotions or those new nonverbal cues so that we can build new connections of emotions with each other. I would just say to continue to ride the uncomfortableness of that. And as Lisa Renee Hall um, says, stumble bravely because we will mess up. People might cross over your boundaries, but let's continue building those nonverbal cues together. What a great conversation. I think we're all sort of on the spectrum of how we're going to bounce back after this. I'm going to rally back real quick right into hug zone. I promise you. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining us. I love talking about this.